Good morning, everyone. This past week, we've seen the best and the worst of humanity. The heinous terrorist attacks in Paris and Beirut, in Iraq and Nigeria, they showed us once again the depths of the terrorist depravity. And at the same time, we saw the world come together in solidarity. Parisians opening their doors to anyone trapped in the street. Taxi drivers turning off their meters to get people home safely. People lining up to donate blood. These simple human acts are a powerful reminder that we cannot be broken. And in the face of terror, we stand as one. In the wake of these terrible events, I understand the anxiety that many Americans feel. I really do. I don't dismiss the fear of a terrorist bomb going off. There's nothing President Obama and I take more seriously, though, than keeping the American people safe. In the past few weeks, though, we've heard an awful lot of people suggest that the best way to keep America safe is to prevent any Syrian refugee from gaining asylum in the United States. So let's set the record straight how it works for a refugee to get asylum. Refugees face the most rigorous screening of anyone who comes to the United States. First, they are fingerprinted. Then they undergo a thorough background check. Then they're interviewed by the Department of Homeland Security. And after that, the FBI, the National Counterterrorism Counter Center, the Department of Defense, and the Department of State, they all have to sign off on access. And to address the specific terrorism concerns we're talking about now, we've instituted another layer of checks just for Syrian refugees. There is no possibility of being overwhelmed by a flood of refugees landing on our doorstep tomorrow. Right now, refugees wait 18 to 24 months while the screening process is completed. And unlike in Europe, refugees don't set foot in the United States until they are thoroughly vetted. Let's also remember who the vast majority of these refugees are. Women, children, orphans, survivors of torture, people desperately in need of medical help. To turn them away and say there's no way you can ever get here would play right into the terrorist hands. We know that ISIL, we know what they hope to accomplish. They've, they've, they've flat out told us. Earlier this year, the top ISIL leader, al-Baghdadi, revealed the true goal of their attacks Here's what he said. He said, quote, compel the crusaders to actively destroy the gray zone themselves. Muslims in the West will quickly find themselves between one of two choices, either apostatize or emigrate to the Islamic State and thereby escape persecution. End of quote. So it's clear. It's clear what ISIL wants. They want to manufacture a clash between civilizations. They want frightened people to think in terms of us versus them. They want us to turn our backs on Muslims victimized by terrorism. But this gang of thugs peddling a warped ideology, they will never prevail. The world is united in our resolve to end their evil. And the only thing ISIL can do is spread terror in hopes that we will in turn turn on ourselves. They will, we will betray our ideals and take actions, actions motivated by fear, that will drive more recruits into the arms of ISIL. That's how they win. We win by prioritizing our security, as we've been doing, refusing to compromise our fundamental American values, freedom, openness, tolerance, that's who we are. That's how we win. May God continue to bless the United States of America, and God bless our troops.